This episode is brought to you by Family Road Trips. Is your day-to-day life relatively stress-free? Are you feeling guilty that pandemic life really hasn't affected you much? Do you feel like you just need to suffer more? Try a family road trip. After 16 hours trapped in a speeding metal death box with your loved ones, you'll be ripping your hair out guaranteed. But wait, there's more. You also have to plan the trip. You need to pack clothes, plan meals, book hotels, and even make arrangements for your pets. Let's not forget the road rage, back pain, repetitive questions, obnoxious road games, constant bathroom breaks. I didn't have to go last time. I'm hungry. He's touching me. No, I didn't. I'm bored. And if you don't knock this shit off right now, I'm turning this damn car around. Road trips. Guaranteed to stress 10 years off your life. Proud sponsor of the Odd Dad Out podcast. Beginning Odd Dad Out podcast in 5, 4, 3... Two, one. Welcome to the Odetta Podcast, where normal is not my specialty. I am your host, as always, the... I don't know. <laughs> Crap, I don't have anything. Adam Higgins, the Odetta out. <laughs> and this is the show where I ramble and rant and <laughs> fall apart. Apparently, I don't have to do my intro anymore. I'm an odd dad out in all the social medias, odddadoutpodcast.com. And you know the things. <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to, I'm not even, I don't care. I'm not going to redo it because I spent enough time making up that commercial, damn it. <laughs> Ah, uh, how you doing? I swear, I don't hate my vacations as much as that commercial would lead me to. I just thought it would be funny. <laughs> and I'm going to leave my notes sitting on my desk and my wife is going to get all upset and think that I'm like, I hate vacations and I don't hate our vacations as much as it led leads on. But damn, if they're not stressful. Uh, <laughs> whenever I had a commercial like that and they're like, and I actually wrote that. I, I should like take a picture of the notes. I actually wrote out a script for that commercial because I normally just kind of improvise all that. Like I just come up with a, this is brought to you by coffee because that's what I'm fucking drinking. And I've done coffee and I've done De- Dr. Pepper and I'm actually drinking Gatorade right now because I just don't want to get all hopped up because I've uh, learned in the last few nights of late night editing sessions that instant coffee keeps me awake a lot more than just brewing a pot of coffee does normally. So I don't need to get all wired. It's already two in the morning. But back to my previous question, how are you doing? I know I've been kind of spotty lately and I've, like I I mentioned, I was just on vacation. And so, yeah, we came back and (laughs) You know, vacation, our vacations are pretty straightforward. I've I've talked about it a few times. We basically drive back to visit family in Texas. We visit my dad and brothers and my in-laws and we all go, you know, we do, we kind of do the standard same things. We go back and we visit family primarily because we don't get to see the family in Texas maybe once a year. If maybe my, if my brothers come visit us, maybe, and it doesn't happen all the time. So we might see them more than once a year. But for the most part, family in Texas, we see them when we go out there in the summer. We only see my dad and my wife's dad when we go out there. And they're both old. It just goes without saying. And I've I've done an entire episode on age and mentioning how old my dad actually is. My dad's pushing 71. It's weird to think about that my dad is in fact that old, but my dad's fucking old. And my wife's dad is in his 50s and neither of them are in the best of health. So we, you know, always have that. We need to make sure we go back and see them because we never know when it could be the last time. And I realize that's a very bummer of a way to look at things, but it's just kind of a fact of our parents getting old. But anyway, you know, we do the standard things. We go to the aquarium. We go to the movies because my mother-in-law's brother owns a movie theater. So we go to the movies which is always kind of cool. Um, 
in the past, we've seen Toy Story 4. We saw that last Transformers movie, not the Bumblebee one, the last really shitty one with King Arthur and all that. Yeah. And this time we actually saw Black Widow, which was, it, it's okay. It, and in the grand scheme of Marvel movies, it's, it's a meh. It's okay. I feel like they set up the end of that movie to where they could totally do a sequel called Black Widows and it would totally make sense. They probably won't do it, but the, they kind of set it up to where they could totally do it. If they wanted Marvel, wink, wink, they won't do it, but it's okay. And it was kind of funny because we were there in, the, in like the middle of the day. I think it was on Wednesday. So well, it was like four o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon in a small nowhere Texas town. So we literally had a private screen. <laughs> we were the only ones there. And on top of everything, because my mother-in-law's brother owns the theater, we don't pay for shit. So we had a private screening of Black Widow. <laughs> kind of cool. But again, it's it's an okay movie. It, it's it's a little on the nose, but you know it's a Marvel movie. It's very predictable, and it was a prequel, so you know she survives at least for a bit. Spoilers: If you don't actually follow the Marvel movies, if, if you care and you didn't already know she dies in Endgame, then what's what's the difference anyway? <laughs> but like I said, our our vacations are pretty straightforward. It's a big drive. We drive all the way from. Phoenix to San Antonio and Corpus Christi area. You know, we drive from central Arizona to South Texas. It's 16 to 18 hours and we do it nonstop. Again, I've discussed our vacation multiple times throughout the history of the show, but it, it, this year was a little different because after doing this for so long, because we've done this pretty much every year for the 11 years we've lived out here i think we've done this trip at least we've done it at least 10 times we've gotten more efficient <laughs> we've gotten way more efficient and so we were able to downsize things and and trim down and we didn't pack as much food and we didn't you know it's one of those you're like oh we're going to be gone for a week and we stay in the extended stay hotel so we can make meals and make sandwiches and things so we're not always going out to eat and we pack a lot of road snacks and things like that. And we have so many meals on the road and all blah, 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 blah. So in the past, we have packed a shit ton of food. And this year, we pared it way down and basically knocked it down to just like two bags of snacks. And it was only really two bags because we had bre like road breakfast. So there was and road lunch. So there was a bag that had bread, peanut butter, bagels, you know, stuff like that. stuff that kind of like, these are big packages. They kind of need their own thing. And so the rest of it was, you know, chips, jerky, gummy bears, <laughs> pretzels, you know, the little cheese crackers, uh, granola bars, stuff like that. Tons of little snacks and stuff, just tons of road snacks. And this is most of what we packed and we'd stop for meals versus in the past, we'd had times where we're like, oh, we're going to pack dinner. And we'd go to KFC and get a whole big ton of food and we'd stop at some point on the road and set up dinner and take a break, eat dinner. This time we were like, nah, we're just going to stop and grab something quick and eat on the road. And we actually ended up eating on the road for all the major meals other than like we, like I said, we packed breakfast and I don't remember if we made lunch on the road or not, or if we got back to the hotel and had lunch at the hotel. I don't remember, but yeah, you know, we had bread and peanut butter and ham or turkey and cheese and stuff like that to make sandwiches and stuff and lots of, lots and lots of snack food <laughs> and me getting particular about jerky. And I bought one kind of jerky at a shop and I was like, well, this isn't the jerky I want. So as soon as we got to a truck stop, I bought more jerky. And <laughs> because when you're on the road, jerky is your best friend. It just is. If you've ever made a long car trip, you know jerky is your best friend. If you're vegan, jerky is your best friend. I'm just telling you, it's the best protein and energy. And if you have like the super hard jerky, it keeps you awake just by the mere act of having to chew on it. <laughs> Personally, I, I wear dentures. I have to get the soft stuff. That's a whole other thing. But this time, it, it was this year, it was 
do interest. Do, uh, that. I don't know what I, what the hell was that. It was interesting because of the whole. We we got really efficient at this. So part of the stuff we got with all of our little kind of mini camping trips where we go to the cabins and and all that stuff was we got these little kind of individual suitcase bag things. It's hard to describe. Just the kind of zipper suitcase mesh bag things. And there's we got them in four colors. And so each of the boys has their bag. And so they would pack all of their stuff for them in their little bag. And then we would take their bags and stick them in the big suitcase. So when we'd get to wherever, we would just take out the one big bag. And here, here's yours, here's yours, here's yours, here's yours. There's your stuff. And my wife and I could have done that, but we just have our big rolling duffel case that we use and it's just easier for us to just have our stuff her stuff's on one side my stuff's on the other it's easier to pack that way and since we did and really mostly the main reason we did actually kept the boys bags in the big bag was because when i pack the van up it's easier to stack the one thing than a bunch of little ones and so uh yeah but we actually because we pared everything down so much this year actually didn't have to use our trailer hitch basket thing. I don't know if you've ever seen people that are on those kind of road trips and they have that sort of luggage rack basket that attaches to a trailer hitch. We have one of those and we got it from my uh, father-in-law and actually it was for my grandfather-in-law uh, a couple few years ago. And we've used it for every major trip. We use it when we go out to the cabins, but this time we actually didn't need to take it. We had everything fitting and we're like hey no we don't need to use it this time we're good everything's good except we usually come back with a lot of extra stuff my parents usually give us a bunch of stuff my in-laws usually give us a bunch of stuff and having that gives us the extra cargo room we need to bring back extra stuff which we now didn't have <laughs> so it made packing everything up to come home a little more difficult and things like we, we we stop in two cities. So we visit one set of family here and then we go to San Antonio and we visit San Antonio family. And so we have to pack up and unpack all of our stuff between those two locations. And one set of family, the, Cor the Corpus Christi family, gives us a lot of stuff to take with us. So then we have to pack all that up. And we get to San Antonio to visit San Antonio family. And we've got to rearrange all of everything that's packed in the van. <laughs> I get a lot of Tetris practice IRL on vacation. Just saying. But it's it's fine because it ultimately it's it's getting to see family. And I've talked in the past about, you know, I, I'm I'm a family person. I'm very attached and close to my family, some more than others. And it's, I have a weird relationship with being close to family because as much as I'm very emotional and very attached and, and close emotionally with my family, I don't talk to anybody. I'm just that guy. I don't call anybody. I don't write. I don't message people. I don't, hey, how's it going? I don't do that. My wife does that. She talks to her dad almost every day, if not her dad, her stepmom. She talks to her sister-in-law all the time for my brothers for the most part. We have like a group chat where we send memes and shit, but we don't really have meaningful conversation most of the time. That's just kind of the way I am. I, I don't, I don't call my dad. I don't call my mom. I don't call anybody. I don't call my sisters. The most, if I have to reach out to one of my sisters, it's usually a, Hey, are you coming over to cut the boy's hair? Hey, we're having a, you know, whatever party. We're having a Super Bowl party. We're doing this. We're doing, Hey, you want to come over? Something like that. I reach out to my sister. Hey, like my sister, I've got a sister that lives out of town, but her, they come into town every now and then. Hey, you guys coming over, whatever stuff like that. That's the extent of me reaching out to family. I really don't talk to anybody because I'm a hermit, but at least as hermit as I can be where I, you know, work out in the world and I have a podcast to do, do hermits have podcasts. I don't know. Does that break the rules of a hermit? I don't know. Somebody tell me. I don't know. Can you be a hermit and still have a podcast? I don't know. It's weird. 
I don't know the hermit rules. But yeah. So for me, the time that I spend with my family is really important. And I really appreciate and treasure the time that I have with my family, even though road trips are incredibly draining. (laughs) Vacation just sucks the life out of me. And being kind of introverted, it's a lot of peopling. And it is probably the one time in my life where my introvert really shows. Because as much as I want to be there with my family and having all the time and and dinners and we're going out to eat and we're doing this and we're having all this stuff. And in the moment, I am there and I'm enjoying myself. It also takes a massive toll on me physically. And and just kind of energy wise, I am usually so drained after each thing that I'm just like, I need to sleep, which is so bad because I already have that problem in general. I'm generally exhausted. I don't sleep much. And then I'm on vacation and we've got stuff to do and people to see and places to go. And so I'm not sleeping much. (laughs) And then we've got stuff to do and all the peopling and it just sucks the life out of me, but there's still more stuff to do. And I've got to be on, I've got to be on way more hours than the day during vacation than I ever am normally. And so it, it kind of kicks my ass all the time, (laughs) but I will say, I really appreciate something we did differently this time was we stayed with one of my brothers who, for all intents and purposes, they're not planners. Him and his wife are not planners. <laughs> they kind of go with the flow. And, hey, I think we need to, we're going to be doing this, but we're not like, oh, what time are we going? We're like, they don't have a strict, oh, we're doing this thing here. Bam. It's a, hey, we're going to do a game night. We're like, oh, what time? Whenever we do game night. <laughs> and every night we were staying with them, we were doing stuff, but you know, a lot of it was, Hey, we're going to, we're, you know, we're staying up late and chit chatting or, Hey, we're going out to dinner with my stepmom, but then we're going to have game night or then we're going to have this thing or, you know, what are we doing? I don't know. (laughs) Hey, we're going to the pool. When? (laughs) What time do you get up? There's a lot of that. So getting to sleep in, I appreciated getting to sleep in <laughs> and I needed it because at least two nights I was up way too late. I think the first night we were there with them, I stayed up talking to my brother for, well, until 530 in the morning. The sun was coming up. I lost count of how many times we let their dogs out to pee during the night. <laughs> I know both of our wives checked out by three. I think Rihanna was, went to bed around one. His wife went to bed around two or three, but we stayed up talking until like five 30 in the morning when he finally was like, yeah, I can't keep going. And again, we're in Texas now. So we're a two hour time difference. So to me, it's three o'clock. My brain, it's three o'clock. I'm just getting home from work. I'm good. (laughs) And it's one of those haven't, Again, don't see this family, but once a year. So we have a lot of catching up to do with stories and whatever the hell's going on. And so I didn't even care. I could have done it. I could just keep going. And had he not gotten tired, I think if he were one to uh, drink as much coffee as I do and just say, no, I'm staying up, (laughs) like we, we would have kept going. I probably would have just run the whole next day on whatever the strongest coffee I could get and just, no, I'm just going to keep going. Uh, the next night was game night where my little brother came over. And so we had a couple of us there with his wife. And so we had the three couples there and the boys were playing video games and we were playing what turned into the Uno game from hell. I think this game was like two and a half, three hours of playing Uno with the six of us and there were a couple of different games we played but this uno game just went on and on and on and on and everybody and it was this the 
the, the conflict between just wanting the game to end, but you still want to win. <laughs> you don't want them to win, but you really don't want the game to keep going. You just want it to be over. It was so bad. Everybody was just back. Just let it end. Oh, it was so great. But. <laughs> oh, it was fun. Yeah, it was a, such a great time. And we, that, that whole experience produced enough jokes that we're probably going to just keep repeating to each other. I'm not going to repeat them here. But at this point, we now have a, a good assortment of inside jokes that we are absolutely going to pull on each other at whatever I, th I feel like it's shit i can just randomly text my brother or his wife <laughs> just to give him shit now <laughs> uh, but you know like uh, as much as i was complaining about the drain of it all and being exhausted and over peopling and all that stuff. I, th this has probably been my favorite vacation in like ever because this is the first vacation we've had where we did not have super small children that needed constant attention. Where we didn't have anybody that needed a stroller or anything like that or diapers. I think last trip we had just barely gotten Sam potty trained. So I don't even think he was like full time in underwear on our last trip because he would have been three, four and he's going on six now. So, yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. And you now he would have been like fully potty trained, but, he's you know, four year old doesn't have much of a bladder. Not that any of them really do at this point. But, yeah, it was it's crazy to think of the difference. In the time. Like I said, we didn't go last year because everything being locked down. We didn't even know if at the time, I'll, I'll just say at the time of our vacation, we technically had in Arizona, we could have left Arizona. We did not know if going to Texas, if we'd be able to do anything. I'll just say the aquarium, all the stuff we normally do on vacation was closed. We couldn't do any of that stuff. So we were just kind of stuck. We were like, okay, we're going to sit in a hotel if the hotels will let us because we're from out of state. We're like, we don't know if we can even get into a hotel. We're not going to be able to do any of the things we normally do. There's so many restrictions. We've got immunocompromised family. Again, our dads are both fucking old. And so it was really kind of high risk. That's why we didn't go last year. So this year was a big thing. We haven't seen everybody in two years. Really wanted to get out there. Again, our dads are old. We wanted to see them. And so, <laughs> you know, it, this year it was, it was important. But again, the boys are all older now. You know, they're going in now. They're all, my youngest is going to be in first grade next week. Shit. Yeah. School's about to start. I'm not even going to get into school. School just snuck up on me. <laughs> I did like I had to look at our calendar. It's like, oh shit, school starts next week. Son of a bitch. But I had <laughs> this was the first trip where I wasn't doing all of the kid things because normally we go to the aquarium, we go to the dolphin show, we go to the whatever stuff. Well, I usually had a stroller or a wagon or something where I had little kids that I was attached to that I was mechanically transporting because they just can't walk for themselves or whatever. And so I was always the guy up at the tops, you know, in the standing section with the stroller, with the wagon, with the whatever. And this year was the first time I ever got to sit down and watch the dolphin show at the Texas State Aquarium in a seat. Ten years, basically, that we've been watching this dolphin show. We've been Watching these dolphins since there were only two dolphins in the show. I think there are four now. <laughs> we're like, oh, yeah, I remember these two when they were teenagers. Now they're the, these like 20 something dolphins. We're like, holy crap, the dolphins are old. <laughs> the, the, growing up 
my boys are have grown up watching these dolphins and watch more and more dolphins come into this uh, facility, and it's crazy. But again, this is the first time I've gotten to sit down and watch this show in a seat. And of course, I was in the splash zone. Not only was I in the splash zone, I happened to have a seat that was exactly where when the dolphin comes up and does a big tail splash, the exact arc of the flipper point angle splash, I took straight head on blast right to the soaked head to toe. (laughs) I didn't get splash. I got flooded by this dolphin. (laughs) I wrung my shirt out. Everybody else, boys next to me are a little bit wet. They're like, ah, I got wet. They're just kind of whatever. I was dripping. Had to wring out my shirt, dripping wet. (laughs) First time I've ever gotten to sit down for a dolphin show and I am soaked. And it also is one of the, like, it suddenly occurred to me, oh yeah, this is salt water. (laughs) Really gross dolphin salt water. (laughs) But yeah, just so many things. There's so many things that I never got to do. And things like the boys are big enough now that when we go to the splash pad at the aquarium, because it's just the, our day at the aquarium is a big day. The boys always look forward to it. And so they go to the splash pad and I've always been there in there with them because that's, you know, the, they're little kids. They need me to be in there. Now they're all big enough that I don't need to be in there with them. And so we all got to like all the parents, we got to sit back at our little bungalow area right there outside the splash pad and eat lunch and watch the kids and enjoy and not, ha- and I didn't have to get soaked and splashed or chase kids around or whatever, or get blasted with water blasters or whatever, <laughs> or get really cold water. <laughs> I didn't have to do it. It's, it was so cool. And again, all the family fun time and my brother who we normally see there wasn't working as much as he normally was. And he works a lot. He does. He's a restaurant manager. He works a lot, but he did have his days kind of timed and his, so that he actually got to go to the aquarium with us. Never gotten to go with us before. His wife goes all the time, takes their kids. They go all the time, but he never got to go with us. And so this is a big, like, hey, we're all here. Big family. We're all here. And so it was it was a better experience this time. And like I said, we just did more in our time. And we actually had it less time, I think. I think we were a couple of days less than we normally do. But it felt like experience wise, we did. It felt like we did more. We were always going and doing and being and hanging out with everybody and, you know, bouncing from my in-law's house to my brother's house to going to the movies, to going to the aquarium, to going here for lunch or going to dinner or whatever, always doing all the things. And for all the money we spend on our hotel rooms, we didn't spend much time there, which is a good thing. I mean, you go on vacation to be on vacation, not to spend time in the hotel. But it was, you know, we, we probably usually spend a lot more time in the hotels. We usually have like time to take a nap every day before the next scheduled thing. And we really did not have that. And I guess was saying before about just me being drained, that really did contribute to a lot of the drain while we were in Corpus. But we had a lot more to pack into those that time while we were there. And so, yeah, but it was (laughs) so much to do, so much to do, so little time. But that's vacation, isn't it? You know, and for our, you know, I've said in the past, when we drive out to Texas, we drive pretty much straight shot. We pretty much do it nonstop. We might stop and take a roadside uh, rest, might stop at a truck stop, not so much a truck stop, but like the the roadside uh rest area things 
there's a couple of them that are really big and very developed and have a lot of lighting and big restrooms and all the services and everything and the really big fancy things. And there's tons of trucks. It's like, this is the place where everybody knows this is where you stop and rest. It's a, you know, huge rest stops. There's one in right there on the border in Texas. It's like mile zero. And I think it's Anthony, Texas. It's right outside El Paso. Um, there's another one in Pecos County that is really nice that we stop at and might stop there and take like, I think it stopped for an hour, hour and a half when we stop at the border and maybe, yeah, I'll just stop. Like everybody go to the bathroom and I'll just stop and sleep for like an hour and a half. And, you know, just kind of power nap until I can't. Until I've, you know, I've got a little bit of energy left and get back on the road and drive through the night and probably drive for four or five hours and then maybe take another like hour, hour and a half nap. But we don't stop at a hotel. We don't do anything major. We just, you know, take a couple of middle power naps as necessary. And I kind of take advantage of when we stop for bathroom breaks or snack breaks or whatever. And get up, stretch my legs, and kind of get my energy back. And my wife and I kind of came to the realization of our vacate, like our vacation responsibilities. And it, it it kind of sucks for her, but it also works in her favor because basically we've kind of come to the realization that my job, I am the primary driver. Just I am. I'm the primary driver. She's not the best with driving overnights at all. She, you know, when she, when her biological clock says it's time to sleep, it's really hard for her to stay up overnight and drive. But it is also tough for me to drive overnight, but it's, you know, it's easier for me to do it. And we kind of came to this kind of realization of I'm the driver. I drive until I can't. She only drives if I can't. If I absolutely need to stop and sleep, but we need to be driving, she can drive and she will drive if she has to. If she's not driving, her job is to keep me awake. So when she's driving, I'm sleeping. If I'm driving, she's awake too. So for all of the, I have to be, you know, I'm driving. We're both awake this whole time for the most part. The only time I'm not awake is if I, if I'm not driving, I'm sleeping because I have to, have to, have to, because I, I drive until I'm going to kill us. Basically the, I can't keep my eyes awake, my eyes awake. I can't keep my eyes open anymore. I need to stop. And it's a kid. It's a situation where we can't stop here and rest. We've got to keep moving kind of stuff she'll drive. And so we stay up and she keeps me awake by talking and we sit there and have whatever the hell conversations uh, for however the hell long we're driving. And again, it kind of sucks for her because there are only a few situations, usually like when we first get going kind of stuff, if it's middle of the day while we're driving, she can rest and take a nap and stuff. But overnight, when I need, you know, for me to stay awake, for us to power through the night, she's got to stay up with me. And it sucks. But we have found in the last few years, that is what's best for us to get through it. Because I can keep driving. I can stay awake and I can keep driving if she keeps talking to me. And so as long as we're talking, I can keep going and I can tough through it and I can just keep driving. And she doesn't have to worry about driving because she has a very difficult time driving my van because she's short and round. She's short and round and has boobs and my van is not great for that because if she can reach the pedals, her chest is pressed up against the steering wheel and then the steering wheel is having to be shoved way up so it can clear every, so she can be in the chair and then she can't see over the steering wheel because the steering wheel is tilted way up high. Like for the seat to be low enough for her to reach the pedals, 
and close enough for her to reach the pedals. She is squished up against the seat or up against the steering wheel and can't really see over the steering wheel. And so it's just not ideal for her to drive my van. Can she do it? Yes. Is it easy? No. So it's better for me to do it. And actually on our way back, I don't think she drove at all. If she did, maybe she drove like an hour. I don't, I think there was a point where I was going to switch her out, but we stopped for lunch and I was like, no, I'm good now. I'm all right. And so we didn't. And on the way back, we actually stopped. We do that in two parts. We drive to El Paso on the first night and then we drive El Paso to home the next day because for whatever reason, driving back from Texas just feels longer. (laughs) So we always do it that way. But yeah, it, it somewhat sucks for her because she has less opportunity to sleep than I do. But what opportunity I have to sleep is I'm going to kill us if I don't, (laughs) which is kind of the way it is when I'm driving for work and the guys at work all understand that I will drive until I can't drive anymore. If I give you the wheel, you must drive because I would rather drive my van. It's my van. I'm driving, damn it. If I'm out and I'm driving, I will drive until I can't drive no more. And then you would better be ready to take over because if I keep going, I'm going to kill us. Just saying. <laughs> I know I'm laughing at that. It's really not funny. <laughs> it's dangerous as hell. It's just stubbornness. Of course, we still had to kind of deal with the issue of we had a bunch of animals with ringworm at home and we had originally planned to take the dogs with us on vacation. But with Jasper having ringworm, we're like one, it's probably not good for him to be stuck in a car for basically 18, 16, 18 hours. That'll basically just contaminate the shit out of the van and then everybody and all the stuff and the boys blankets, everything. And the dogs aren't too thrilled with car rides in general, so I don't know how they'd handle. I really don't know how they'll ever handle if we do take them to Texas on a trip. I just don't know. But also, we don't know if they'd be able to even get checked into a hotel with him having ringworm. We're like, it'd be irresponsible of us to check him into a hotel so or expose him because all of everyone we were staying with had dogs or to expose him to everybody else and can potentially infect everybody else. So we're like, okay, we're keeping, we're leaving the dogs at home. But that meant my sister had to come over and dog sit and check on him and give dogs and cats meds and all the stuff they needed while we were gone. But the thing we didn't tell her was to check on anything in the garden. And she did go out there a couple of times, mostly to brush the dogs and stuff like that. But she didn't really do anything to check on the garden. And for whatever reason, every year when we leave on vacation is when the monsoons hit. So there's always a point where our house, I wouldn't say gets flooded, but the storms hit hard. And there's probably a good two days of storms that always hit while we're gone. And so my sister is there the next day and the ground is all squishy. and. I forget why it was that we ended up on a video chat with her. I forget why it flipped to being a video call, but we ended up on a video call. And so she's walking around showing all the animals. And so we got to see all the animals and say hi and all the things. And she goes out into the yard and I can see all the plants and see the watermelon and see the cucumbers are just overgrown as shit. And there was a point where she walked over to the cucumbers and she's like, I don't know what that is over there, but it's doing really well. And they were just sprawling out into the yard, into the grass, the grass. I just cut the grass before we left. It was because of all the rain and everything. It was just so overgrown. And I go and she pans by the cucumbers and I just see these monster cucumbers that had I mentioned anything to her, I probably would have said, hey. If you get a chance and you see anything that needs to be picked, can you go ahead and pick any good cucumbers and you can take them or whatever? We didn't mention anything to her. And so we had these monster overgrown cucumbers that were on there when we got back. 
And I had to pick all these. And they were like, it's one of those things where you see it and you're like, they're almost white. They were like, you know, they're supposed to be green. And one of the signs to pick your cucumbers is that you start seeing the like the flower end where it starts turning yellow. And you're supposed to pick it then before it starts getting bitter because if it turns too yellow or white or whatever, it's starting to get bitter and all that stuff. We picked them. They were like bright ass yellow and white and shit. And I was like, these are going to be garbage. But, you know, they tasted fine as a salad cucumber. They were fine to just eat maybe with some salt or ranch dressing or not ranch or Italian, whatever. Like, yeah, you no, know it's fine. They're fuck it. We'll eat them. But I have all these fucking cucumbers and I picked a bunch more. And just recently, actually yesterday, was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday made a bottle of pickles that, cause this is actually the first time we've made pickles this season. Most all of our cucumbers either we've just eaten them straight, like all these that we just had from vacation overgrowth. We just ate those straight because they were so big. Or we put them in the fridge and just never got to them until they went bad. I think the first batch, I tried making a batch of pickles at the start of the season. They just, I think my brine was off for the, cucumbers were a little too soft or when it just weren't right it didn't come out i ended up tossing the whole batch right now i got a fresh batch in there from a bunch of cucumbers i just picked this week because surprise surprise since we got back the storms kept rolling and it's actually it rained here pretty much like four days straight our yard was flooded and if as i always say if you follow me on instagram you saw some of the pictures of some of the flooding like so much say I wouldn't so much say flooding there's a lot of like deep set parks and stuff like where it's kind of sunken in to where the park field area is kind of a drainage area you know the storm drains drain into that area so like the playground equipment's up at the top of the hill but the field if you were going to play soccer or something down there when it floods it floods into there and this you know it's probably good 10 feet. I don't even like know how big those like human sized drain sewage pipes are or storm drain things are, but it's that it's that high, you know, person could climb in there. Those were sunk. <laughs> the water was completely covering the full drain pipes. That's how deep it got. And it was raining like that basically for two weeks. So it got, it got pretty rough and pretty wet. And my ground, my backyard is completely overgrown right now and it hasn't rained in two days. I still don't know if I'm going to be able to mow the grass tomorrow. <laughs> I hope I can mow my grass tomorrow. It really needs it. It's really overgrown. It's really bad. <laughs> but the the rain has been great for the cucumbers. My strawberries, unfortunately, are done for the season i think the summer heat finally got to them and some of the moths and stuff started getting to them i really need to do some work i got a lot of garden work ahead of me i don't i don't think we're gonna have much going until the fall once it cools down i'll start planting some more maybe we'll do some more popcorn i've got a a idea right now i'm taking all of the corn we grew last fall the popcorn that we had left and i'm actually planning on making some cornbread from it but all this corn is blue so I have a, I, I just got a grain mill before we went on vacation. So I ground up all of this corn. So now I have this bag of blue corn meal. So I'm planning to make a blue corn bread, which I, I really want to, I, I really want to make a video of me making this blue corn bread, but I need to practice the recipe before I do it. And I don't want to waste all my good corn meal before I do it. So I actually got some corn meal to practice making cornbread before I go and uh, use our blue corn meal for it, but I, it's just kind of an experiment with our fresh corn meal and see what I can do. That's kind of what I, I want to see what I can do with our fresh ground stuff. So yeah, but yeah, the garden right now, all we've got left, we got green beans and, uh, cucumbers because unfortunately the watermelon that we were watching we should have picked before we left on vacation because when we got back, day we get back, I go to check on it and it's got a soft spot and I touch it and we're like, oh, it's soggy. It's, it's really soft. And it was basically mushed out and I go and cut it open and it was completely uh, rotted out the center and just 
it was a watermelon. It just was water inside. That was it. <laughs> and so I just chunked up the rind, threw it in the compost, and you know, it's been that. <laughs> I've been really working my compost right now, you know, with you know, watermelon vines and trimming uh stuff and wood chippings and and that's the other thing, man. The rain is just it, our mesquite out front that I just trimmed like a month ago. I trimmed the mesquite in June and haven't even finished running all of those branches through the wood chipper. I had to go and trim my mesquite again this week. Oh, <laughs> with I've got brought as much growth from that. So I've got so, so much wood chip, so much wood chip going in the compost and I'll probably throw more on all of the garden beds and stuff. But man, so much wood chip. <laughs> man. There's so much. And I'm like, I'm trying to remember all of the things because it's one of those, you know, curses of I don't write shit down when I really want to mention it on the show. But I kind of wanted to give you the general vacation update. You know, it's kind of what I do. It's vacation time. I give you the vacation update. I try and get back into the swing of things. Ugh, I'm tired. It's been a bitch. <laughs> it's been a, it's just been so much. It's getting used to being back at work. Like I appreciate, I probably appreciated vacation this time more than I usually do, which is weird because the day before we left, I didn't get home until like eight in the morning because theater stuff. And so, you know, I was out late the night before we went on vacation. I worked the next day. My wife was back to work the next day. We usually come back and have like a day of rest to resettle and like, nope, back to work we go. You know, I was work. I the night we got back, I had a podcast to edit, to get, to turn around and get back out that night. And I did that the night we got back. And that, that's kind of a big part of why there wasn't a show last week was I'm just tired and burnt and catching up on sleep and re, you know, kind of getting resettled after vacation. And yeah, <laughs> it's one of those things, family, and I always say family and sleep and business have to come first. Work's got to come first. If I got podcasts to edit, stuff to work on, and I don't have time to record, unfortunately, I don't have time to record. And yeah, lately that's been happening more, but I'm trying. I'm going to try. But yeah, I think that's, I think that's a good enough vacation update for you. Uh, I had so much to do. I'm still so tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm just I'm really tired and I really just want like I want to have a day where I don't have to get up and do anything, but with school starting next week, I've got to. <laughs> Every day there's stuff to do. There's there's so much to do. And so yeah, that is what it is. Life. <laughs> but I think I'm gonna wrap it up there and say Thank you for listening to the show. Remember, you can subscribe to the show and listen to all the back episodes at odddeadoutpodcast.com. You can subscribe and listen for free on your favorite podcast listening service of choice. I'm on the Spotify's and the Apple Podcast and Google Podcast and all the podcast places. And if I'm not there, tell me so I can get there. Yeah. Uh, you can reach out to me on the socials. I'm at Odd Dad Out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Email show at odddadoutpodcast.com or drop me a voicemail or text 516-636-7631. That's 516-OTOPOD1. Whew, I'm sure there's more. If you feel like supporting the show, there's a place to buy stuff when you go to the website. I already told you at and I'm going to get the fuck out of here because I'm tired. Big ass run on sentence. Thank you as always. You are awesome. And until next time, thank you and good night. <laughs>